They'll be calling you a radical. Want to talk about Fukushima? Want to talk about my walk in Manhattan on Saturday? Want to talk about activism? Want to talk about Blue Castle hearings? A lot of activism that's going on. First of all, you want to get really up to date. These podcasts by Libby, Nuclear Hot Seat, are fantastic. The one she had yesterday with the doctor, Joseph, is it is amazing. I mean, talk about eight years of college, you can, I mean, through her experience a whole lifetime, I mean, talk about a professor giving out lectures in detail. Oh, wow. Blue Castle. Fukushima, what are we, 926 days? And simply know this. What has been done about Fukushima? Fucking nothing. Zero. I want to talk about Blue Castle. The hearings are going on right here. Blue Castle is the nuclear power plant they're trying to build on the mighty Green River in southern Utah. I was intensely fighting these evil, creepy monsters when I got sick. The best thing I think I did is those videos that are done out of the ICU unit at the top of LDS hospital. I did a subset of videos about Blue Castle when I'm sick. My doctor used to come in and bring me the newspaper. Hauled me over to the Capitol right next to... LDS there with the central line shriveled up so I could add it. Herbert, Governor Herbert, Dirty Herbie, this Aaron Tilton, their faces are being exposed, Ken Jones. These are hardcore criminals. They broke the law, so grotesque. And I would like to say this to Matt and Hill and all that organized and brought this lawsuit against them. I love you guys so much. Oh, I love you guys. There's a group of activists in Utah that are amazing. I said out of the, you know, so anybody who types in Blue Castle Nuclear, Talk about get a reality in your face. They're going to get me with a central line hanging out of my jugular vein near dead from leukemia telling the details about the fraud. As I say, Wall Stegner would roll in his grave. Stegner and you'd all used to, I mean, talk about their homes. I was so glad that the Dr. Joseph brought up the Synergy conversation of Rachel Carson today and how that came to be and how that book found, found its way to President Kennedy's desk and it changed the world. This is the modern day literature as I call it right now. As it's been said for years, literal, literature only changes around the edges. Bullshit. Talk about the core. And if you don't think one person can make a difference, you think about the last real marine biologist, the only one we had. Rachel Carson. As Jay, my friend, wrote that beautiful letter I posted in some of my videos, as me talks, he's a beautiful socioeconomist with a huge, giant brain. He and I have brainstormed together for years over coffee. We talk for hours. He's a genius. And he says, Kevin, I just think you're over the top, Fukushima. I know you're not over the top now. He says, I wish I'd have listened to you more. And he wrote that letter, and he says, this activist has me convinced that Barack Obama's mother was a downwinder. You know, he's talking about me. I, I finally convinced him. And this is not a guy who just listens to anything and anything says. You're right, Kevin. We need to find this literature, our literature. As activists, it needs to find its way to Barack Obama. He need, as President Kennedy, he broke free and he signed away nuclearism. Believe it or not, so did Reagan, that Reagan piece of shit, worst president, you know, uh, talk about a nightmare. Well, but remember one thing, he was anti-nuclear. Nancy was in his ear, he was anti-nuclear. And as Gorbachev says, and by the way, Rhodes' beautiful play was here in Utah, and this is what the nuclear old school downwinder thesis think of me, Carol Gallagher. Let me tell you, Carol, I love you, but your friends, this is what they think of me. His aide asked them, where's Kevin Blanche? Oh, he wasn't invited. Who? What? And his aide said, are you kidding me? Are you kidding you? This is the nuclear thesis here, as I fought it tooth and nail hardcore. I've accomplished so much in so long of a time that YouTube brought us onto the stage to where it's working. I, I, I sense the change. Yeah, it took a long time to get here to mass murder us. And Fukushima's going to mass murder millions. But I will say this, to say it's going to wipe out all humanity, hell no. Think about this, my father. Drafted. And if you want to know about science, let's talk about the greatest study that is right in hiding in plain sight, and I can give it to you over and over and over and over. The drafted atomic veterans that were placed in the trenches. They didn't live there. They weren't there for years and years. They were in the blast. My dad was a very close blast. Woke up in the hospital. They were all drafted Marines. Out of the 40,000, Richard Bur er, 
Leonard Bird's Folding Paper Cranes is an incredible book. He was one of the last ones that was in there that passed. They died at different stages. Most of them died 10, 20 years later. Of course, other things killed them. I mean, these were Korean War veterans. I mean, you know, a lot of them. Can you blame them? And to all you gun toters, just remember this. I'll say this. Go talk to a Korean War vet. Go talk to a Vietnam War vet. Even if somebody does come into your house or does your thing, whatever, you know, which it happens so rarely, but kill a man. Go kill a human being and go, go talk to a Korean vet or a Vietnam vet. Go have a conversation with them. There's reasons. So, they all die of cancer. All of them. The ones that weren't killed other ways or other things. They died at different stages. Some died at 30. Some died at 40. A lot died around 50. A lot died in their late 60s. I mean, it's laying in plain sight. The Chernobyl thesis out there didn't kill a million people. Is his book. I love his book, but it's so conservative. It, Chernobyl's killed 40 million people, and I can prove it. Fukushima has killed well in excess of 200,000 people. My estimate, I mean, forget 200,000. What am I saying? I think in my work, on the cancer rates, I'm in the number one leukemia unit. I mean, this is not hyperbole. This is the rates of cancer increasing, the survival rate decreasing after 21 years of increasing. My work, and I'm intense in this, do not kid yourself, don't underestimate my work and don't underestimate me. Because I don't just eat, sleep, drink this, I literally sleep with it. I got leukemia seven months later, but anyway, I believe that Fukushima has killed way north of 200,000 people in North America to date. And I can show in detail, I can go into a long dramatic lecture with detail on my numbers and how I arrive at those numbers. You know, I've, I'm working on a matrix. There's a lot going on in the activism world. And the Blue Castle, it's going on a price right now. Pay attention, all you activists out there, of how this scam works. He, Aaron Tilton was a politician. Dirty Herbie, our governor. Ken Jones, he placed Ken Jones, the water quality engine. One guy gave the water to illegally. I mean, this is so corrupt, and we brought the suit, and these guys are going to stay on the sand. Who cares what the judge rules for you? Who cares? Because in Utah, the court system does not work. It's broken. It's been totally hijacked. In the appellate court, uh, you know, and that's what they do. They scold the Utah courts. What are you doing? But listen to these guys on the stand. Listen to these guys' lies. He took the stand yesterday, their expert, and lied his ass off. They perjure themselves every day. But lying and white collar crime is totally, if we haven't accepted that lying is not only legal, it's accepted, it's encouraged, it's a way of life. Tell that to Barry Bonds, tell that to Lance Armstrong. As I used to say, it's Mark, our culture from 1989 to present, nothing but Mark McGuire swinging Albert Bell's bat. But now I say it's Mark McGuire swinging Albert Bell's bat riding Lance Armstrong's bike. You know, the Lance Armstrong conspiracy was so widespread. The marine biologists, why is there no studies out of the Pacific? I've come to conclusion because they're just titles and names. They, have, they don't work. They don't, I'll guarantee you all the marine biologists and all the partners, they don't even know how to do a fucking study. They fucking sit in their ivory towers as they've been propped up by the nuclear industry and they're funded by the government. It's going to take a real leader. These people, you don't think this country has went through these fights before philosophically, and that's why we're going to Hamilton's grave. And I'm going to show you that we are the Herrick Beecher Shows, and you few activists that are out there, remember this. I equate this very similar to the 1830s. For the Harriet Beecher Stowe's, the Alexander Hamiltons, even clear back then, Alexander Samuel flew in the face of slavery, watched it. Do you know how, and that's another reason we're going to Washington Square. That's where the free slaves, original ground, that's a whole other thesis, the Dutch India Company, which is the modern day Walmart. The shirtwaist fire, that hallowed ground is, you can lay those pictures of the shirtwaist fire and the Bangladesh death, which right next to each other, as the family's looking at 102 years away from each other, right there. But you don't give a fuck, because America has absolutely no morality. Zero. They have none. And I could prove it. The deaths are there. You don't care. You you know, oh God, I got cheap goods at fucking Walmart. Yeah, and that's what they are, is cheap fucking goods. As it's been proven, the $4 more to make the Apple phone here. I don't give a fuck. You know, it's anything. You guys accept it. You, 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 it's, it's no different than the 1830s. And a small group of abolitionists... We're the modern-day abolitionists because we're standing on moral ground. In the flat, the Harriet Beecher Stowe's of the world, how they stood one in a million. They were one in a million, literally. They stood up. But who was right, the one or the million? No, the one. And they changed the world. 
Rachel Carson changed the world. One person, and I'll say this to every one of you people that say you love the ocean. Where the fuck are you? She stood in the face as she was dying and she took these evil fuckers on. And she saved millions of you fuckers' lives. Millions of you people's lives. We're fighting for your lives and your kids' lives and your future's lives. And you don't even know we're fighting for you because you're too fucking dogmatic, fucking ignorant. I don't fucking give a fuck about you fucking ignorant masses. I want you to live, but I care about your kids, and I care about your unborn children, and I care about the youth of this fucking country, because they've been fucking given a raw fucking deal. They've been given a fucked up deal for the first time in the history of this country. We have poisoned this earth, as Ackerman says, everything else out the window. This is a whole nother world. The fucking 311 changed the world. Fuck, the nuclear fallout is cancer, period, period, period. You fuckers are willing to cut your breasts off, have your prostate cut out. Oh, that fucking, what are you talking about? There's no replacement for fucking nuclear. I call him, what's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking solar, oh God, that can't, it's already being done. That's the thing, it's being done, right in front of your nose, it's happening. Oh, San Onofre shuts down, rolling blackouts, oh really, lying fuckers. Oh, fuck, we shut down all the nuclear plants in fucking Germany, can't have, oh, been done. Oh, we shut down all the fucking nuclear plants in Japan, oh, they're over, they're economically destroyed, huh? You know, I love it how they, the mantra in Japan, under the economy, under the economy, under the economy, when they fell for this shit in 1986, the Nikkei peaked at fucking 35,000. Say that we destroyed their economy a long fucking time ago, as we destroyed ours a long time ago, Psalm Sacrament says. These fuckers still think they're on the winning team and have something to buy you in on the winning team and your fake fucking ugly fucking fake fucking rock styrofoam piece of shit fucking mansion. It's a piece of shit. As I said on Fifth Avenue, when those guys got found not guilty, those people that murdered and locked those girls in there and dumped their diet and changed the fucking world, at least the Fifth Avenue mansions were of quality. Now we don't even have quality. Yeah, it's 1%. Some of Occupy finally got it. I've been preaching for three years. They finally got it. They put up that fucking great picture of the original throwing the fucking bankers out of the temple. Jesus Christ. Usury. Until you understand what usury laws are. We have to do this locally. We're not going to do it nationally. We have to get to President Obama and make him understand his mother was a downwinder. That what fucking bloom 300 open air tests across southern Utah. We in Utah know. Fucking Oklahoma, Texas, and Utah, we go into Nile. What do you think all the hairspray's about? Yo, know, can you imagine your grandpa or your father getting up in front of the mayor and spending an hour doing his fucking hair? That because it's a facade, that's who these people are. Look at these right-wing neocon fuckers. Look at their hair. Everything about them's fake because it's a facade. It is a reflection of who they are. Until you people wake up and realize. That us as activists, saw trigger, oh fuck, call me a soft fucking trigger. Go, I dare any fucking one of you fuckers. Runs me in public. I like this guy, says, oh fuck, I'm running, you're gonna kick your ass. Oh really? Oh really? Why don't you come kick my fucking ass? Good, good, bring it on, fucker. Because I'll tell you what, I don't want to fucking tack. But if you tack me, oh fuck, I know how to fight. I know how to fight physically, mentally, with my back all the fucking way. I'm not afraid of any of you. And I'll stand there by myself. I don't give a fuck. And we're going to fucking talk about everything that ever happened right there. This all comes down to human rights issues. They're all the same fucking issue. Morality and integrity and fucking leaders obviously have no integrity. They have sold their soul to the fucking devil to the highest bidder. Every last single one of them. The marine biologists, the fucking nuclear players, the politicians, all of them. None of these fuckers. They're not educated. They're not smart. They're dumb. They're bought and fucking sold, including President Obama, including laughing in his own mother's face. Death. What a fucking disrespect. You know, the fucking GLP, fuck, they'll come out and tell you right to your face. We'll sell out the fucking fucking earth for fuck. We don't care if we mass murder our own family for a buck, but they tell you that up front. They tell you that. There are no Rachel Carson. She was a marine biologist. All you marine biologists, fucking may God have mercy on your fucking souls. May God have mercy on your souls, you evil fuckers. Megan Rice is the daughter of Dr. Rice. The professor right there. Dorothy Day, all you New Yorkers. The Catholic workers fucking rights. Amazing. You don't get this. The masses don't get my angle and where I'm going. Oh, you're playing to the morality issue. No shit. No shit. Hello. Hello. Because we are the modern day abolitionists. You know, it's my daughter in Brooklyn. We walk by that church built by abolitionists. Right there in old Brooklyn. You know, the Battle of Brooklyn. As they lost, Hamilton. You know, right there in Manhattan, where are they? That battle's fucking took. They lost. 
You know, but they turned the fucking tide, and they fought against tyranny, they fought against the fucking queen. Oh, the Tariff Act of 1789. Oh, uh, usury laws, antitrust laws, Occupy was powerful, as I stood right there on that ground three years ago. Everybody says, well, what happened? I was due to speak in Zakati, I got cancer. I got sick the day I was due to fly. And I tell everybody I've been on a two-year LDS mission in the top of the LDS Bone Marrow Transplant Center, which, by the way, has nothing to do with the Mormon Church. It's an historic name. I've got a second chance. The forces there be, whether it be God, whether it be whoever, i got a second chance. So we're going to reboot this. And I'm going to stand there, and we're going to restart this movement, just like I tried to start it three years ago. Just like a small group who started Occupy right there at NYU, right there at Washington. Just like when the gay rights march, they fought back and said, no more. It worked. Whether you agree with it or disagree with any of this, it doesn't fucking matter. It's what works. The economic philosophy, the nuclearism has been a gigantic failure and you're willing to go to your own fucking... I've watched in the hospital. I've watched people. Oh, I worked in a nuclear power plant. I'm fucking 49 years old. I have leukemia. Oh, no, it didn't give it to me. Oh, bye, I'm dead. Not me, motherfuckers. Not me. Not fucking our unborn children and our beautiful grandchildren, the beautiful youth of this fucking country. I'm going to fight for them like our fathers and our grandfathers and our great-grandfathers fought for us. Not with a fucking gun, not with a fucking drum. I'm going to fight like Hamilton fought, with my brain intensely in fucking logic. I'm going to fight with things that work. This nuclear, these are all human rights and they all tie together, and this is the fucking card I'm going to play. I'll play it till the fucking day I die. It's called integrity. And I'm going to fucking call you fuckers out until one of you fuckers stand up and give us a marine biology report out of the Pacific. Tell us the fucking truth! Nothing's been done, you lying, evil fuckers. You're glass house. You're afraid. As Thomas Ackerman says, they still think there's something to fucking, they're on the winning team and there's something left to win. You're not on the winning team. You're on the losing team. Stay in tune.